Okay, let's talk about how to do this problem here. And before I tell you exactly uh, what it is, I would say if I was to give this as a pop quiz and uh, an algebra or an algebra two course, maybe in a college algebra course, um, maybe even a pre-calculus course, maybe a pre-calculus would be a higher percentage, but definitely like an algebra one or algebra two, I would say maybe 10% would get this right. That's assuming that I um, kind of showed them how to do it. But if you didn't have any clue, you would be like, well, first of all, what's going on here? And then uh, as soon as you kind of understand what's, you know, what the topic is, because we have, we're dealing with these little I's, that's an I right there. So we have I to the 40th power plus I to the 50th power. What could this be? What is the answer? Well, um, if you think you know how to do this, I would certainly encourage you to uh, pause the video and work on it. Do not use your calculator. You could use a calculator, but that's uh, defeats the purpose because if I was to give this in a quiz, I would say no calculators allowed. But um, anyways, uh, this is important stuff. Okay, so this is just not like a trivial little problem. Uh, it may not be a common problem, but something you definitely need to know if you are studying algebra. So we're going to get to how to solve this in just one second. But first, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tablet Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. And uh, over several years, I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of that. You can uh, check out my math help program by following the link in the description of this video. But basically, I have 100 plus uh, different math courses ranging, ranging from pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, going to be launching uh, pre-calculus here very, very shortly. Um, I also do a lot in the area of test preparation. So if you're studying for the GED, SAT, uh, ACT, GRE, GMAT, ACUPLACER, um, CLEP exam, ALEX exam, a teacher certification exam, nursing school entrance exam, ASVAB, all those courses, um, I'm sorry, all those tests uh, have a good amount of math on them. If you don't do well in the math section, you do not do well on the exam. So let me help you out. Just go to my uh, website, check out my full course catalog. I should have your exam that you're studying for. If I do not, drop me a line and I'll help you out the best I can. Um, I also do a lot with independent learners like homeschoolers. So if you homeschool, I have a great homeschool learning system and track record, by the way. I've been helping homeschoolers for 15 plus years. And then uh, lastly, help those of you that are just struggling in your current math courses. Now, if you're serious about wanting to do better in math, now you have to ask yourself, are you serious or not? Because if you're looking for shortcuts, then uh, I'm not the person for you. But if you truly are serious, then you need to do this. And that is, you got to buckle down, you got to take great math notes. So over decades of teaching math, it's just apparent to me that those students are working hard every day, taking excellent notes, they got something to study from, they always end up doing very well. And the reverse is true. Those students who like to, uh, you know, check in on their cell phone, uh, you know, talk to their buddies in class. Maybe they have their best friend in class that they're you know, like, you know what, that person's better at note taking than I am. I'll let them take my notes and then I'll just copy from their notes or I'll just take their notes uh, the night before the test. Listen, you know, uh, all this right here, I would say a huge portion of students do this kind of stuff. They're always trying to skirt the system. And by the way, I was trying to, you know, take shortcuts way back in the 1980s. Uh, we didn't have cell phones. Well, we did, but they were gigantic and it cost uh, $5,000. And none of us had that in school. But um, anyways, uh, listen, everyone's looking for the easy way out. I'm here to tell you there is no easy way out, okay? If you're serious about learning math, you're going to have to put in the work. Uh, but it will pay off, right? So uh, that's my philosophy, but it comes from decades of teaching mathematics and my own personal experience. Okay, so, um, but in the meantime, as you're improving in your note-taking, as you should be, I offer detailed comprehensive math notes that you can study from to include pre-algebra, algebra one, geometry, algebra two, and trigonometry. You can find the links to those notes in the description of this video. Okay, so let's get to this problem Again, if you think you can do this problem, uh, you know, definitely pause the video. Don't just look at the solution real quick. If you know what we're talking about, I'm going to give you a clue here in a second. Uh, pause the video before you see how I do it. Just think about it, you know, stretch your brain a little bit. But let's get into it and let's see if you're part of this 10% that have been taking great math notes. Maybe you've been watching my uh, YouTube videos. I think I've done a version of this prom. 
Matter of fact, I know I have uh, in my uh, some of my other previous YouTube uh, videos. By the way, if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing. I've been on YouTube for like 10 plus years. I have like a thousand videos, so I've done a lot of um, <laughs> you know videos on all kinds of math topics, and I've done something similar to this. But let's get to it. So, what are we talking about? Now, what's this I business? Well, this I stuff right here. We're talking about complex numbers. Okay, so. Um, now you can see i is equal to the square root of negative one, but really in mathematics here, let me just uh, draw this here. When um, you're studying basic, not basic math, well, yeah, I guess basic math, we're talking about elementary school, we have the uh, number line, okay? So on this number line, we have these lovely numbers like one and two and uh, natural numbers, and then we have, uh, include zero, we have whole numbers, and we have integers, then we have all these uh, numbers in between all these other numbers. So that would be, you know, um, rational numbers, irrational numbers. Uh, you know, all these guys right here we call what? Well, we call that the set of real numbers, okay? The real number system. And that's pretty much what people are used to working with, okay? Uh, but that's what we start off learning um, in elementary school, middle school, and when we start learning algebra. But there comes a, a point in time a need for us to expand um, our the uh, number systems that we work with, we need to get into a, another number system called the complex number system, and those numbers come in the form of A plus B I. Okay, now um, I've done a lot of uh, videos on the reason why we need complex numbers, but this is what we're dealing with. We're dealing with a complex number, and we're trying to find the power and uh, powers of a particular complex uh, numbers and add them up. Okay, so this is what this is the topic. We're, we're dealing with complex numbers and um, a real number set is part of the complex number set. Okay, so that's just the bigger picture here. Again, I don't want to go into a full, um, you know, little mini lesson on uh, complex numbers and why we need them, but you certainly need them. And if you are um, in Algebra 1 or beyond, you're going to be uh, dealing with them. Okay, here, just a quick example. I just can't help myself to teach this. So let's just do this real quick. Um, so if you have your calculator, you want to kind of um, play around here. Let's go x squared is equal to 16. How do I solve that? Well, I would take the square root of both sides. So x is going to equal to positive negative 4 because positive 4 times positive 4 is a positive 16, and negative 4 times negative 4, in fact, is also positive 16. Okay, so uh, this is a quadratic equation. There's two solutions, and here are the answers, both positive and negative 4, right? So some of you were like, oh, x squared is equal to negative 16, x is equal to negative 4. I guarantee you, uh, I don't know how many views this video is going to get. I would say thousands of views. Uh, Typically, my videos do pretty well, my math videos, so I'm pretty grateful for that. But I would say thousands of people are going to say, oh, x is equal to negative 4. Wrong, wrong. Okay, that's a, you know, sad face situation. No, it's not equal to negative 4. When we take the square root of both sides, uh, remember, when we're taking the square root, uh, we're trying to find two numbers, ex the exact same numbers, such that we will multiply them together, we get back to the answer, negative 16. So negative 4 times negative 4 gets us to positive 16, not negative 16. So this is a situation where we need to use uh, imaginary numbers, complex numbers. So that's the bigger picture topic, and I emphasize that because this stuff is important, right? And you start learning this uh, typically in your Algebra 1 situation, uh, especially when you're dealing with quadratic equations, okay? Now, you're going to continue to grow your knowledge of the complex number system, all right? Uh, there's a lot we do with complex numbers. And matter of fact, I'm just finishing up my pre-calculus course. I'm doing some pretty sophisticated advanced math, uh, trigonometric form of complex numbers, all kinds of crazy stuff. So uh, if you're interested in uh, that level of math, just hold on for a couple weeks and I'll have that course launched. But anyways, so this is the subject. All right now, if you don't know what I'm talking about, then, well, you haven't studied this yet, but you will be studying it. Okay, so i, by definition, okay, is equal to the square root of negative 1, right? If you didn't know that, now you know that, okay? All right, so what happens if we square uh, I squ this i, okay? In other words, I have an i squared. Well, if I square both sides, I end up with the i squared, I'm going to be left with negative 1. That radical is going to go away, right? So I'm going to square both sides, and I end up with i squared is equal to negative 1. So now... 
what about i cubed? What I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look at a pattern here. Well, i cubed is the same thing as i squared times i, right? So i squared times i to the first. Remember, same base, so that's i to the third power. Again, if you're kind of lost, well, you know, I said like 10% of the people are going to get this right, right? right? So if you're kind of like, uh, you're kinda, I'm a little bit lost now. Well, remember, I've got to know something about powers and exponents, same base. We add the exponents, so that i squared times i is equal to i cubed. So i squared, I already know, is equal to negative 1. This is negative 1 times i, so it's negative i. So i to the fourth. Well, i to the fourth is the same thing as i squared times i squared. Okay, so i squared is what? Negative 1. So this is a negative 1 times negative 1, which is a positive 1. And you can kind of see uh, the pattern here. So in mathematics, even if you didn't know what to do, try to look for patterns. Patterns are uh, critical, are essential to help you solve problems. So uh, we want to understand, you know, we're trying to figure out what you know, i to the 40th power is, right? Or i to the, let's say, 97th power. Well, what are you going to do? Are you going to take i and multiply it by itself uh, a bazillion times? You know, that's a lot of work, okay? And we don't want to work harder. We want to work smarter, okay? And you got to know these little patterns and techniques, little hacks, okay? People like that word, hack, little shortcuts, little secret tips or whatever like that. Now, and this is kind of one of them, okay? All right, so we want to understand some basic patterns of i and, and what i is equal to. Now we can go ahead and start solving our problem. So how are we going to do this? All right, so here is the problem. i to the 40th plus i to the 50. Well, the key to this problem, well, there's two keys, okay? The first is writing i, let's go over here, i to the 40th, writing this different, okay? You can see I have this i squared to the 20th. We can use the properties of exponents, i squared to the 20th, Okay, this 20 gets multiplied by that 2, so this is equal to i to the 40th. So the reason why I did this, okay, is because I know what i squared is equal to, okay? i squared, remember, is equal to negative 1. Let's go back up here and recall i squared is equal to negative 1. So now, let's go back down here, okay? Well, i squared is uh, negative 1, so negative 1 to the 20th, that's really the equivalent problem. Okay, let me give myself some more room. So what do we want to do here? Well, we're taking negative 1 to an even power. All right, so negative 1 to the e an even power. What's the answer going to be? Well, let's do some uh, practice here. Let's, let's do some even powers of negative 1. So negative 1 times negative 1, that's even, right? That's 2. Uh, that's going to be a positive 1. And I have negative 1 times negative 1. I have negative 1 to the fourth right here. That's also positive 1. So negative 1 to the even power, negative 1, if the power is even, the answer is going to be what? It's going to be a positive 1. So negative 1 to the 20th is positive 1. That is it. Okay, now what do you think negative 1 to an odd power uh, is going to be? Well, now hopefully most of you are saying, well, it's not going to be negative 1. And in fact, you would be correct because let's look here. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1 or negative 1 to the third is negative 1, and you could do this with uh, various other odd powers just to, uh, you know, um, make sure you have this right. But being that I can write both of these powers, and let's go over here, and I forget about i to the 50th, I can write as i squared to the 25th power, okay? So this is a main uh, technique in order to kind of um, deal with these powers of i, okay, when we're dealing with imaginary numbers. So uh, this is odd. Okay, so odd is going to be negative, right? And even is going to be positive. So we end up with 1 plus negative 1 is 0. Okay, the answer is 0. Now, if you got that right, I must in turn give you a happy face with a crazy mohawk, okay, with a lot of hairspray. We used a lot of hairspray in the 1980s, and people did actually wear mohawks at school. I'm not sure what they're doing uh, today, but uh, it was probably pretty dangerous to have that much uh, hairspray in your hair. But we did it, and we thought we were cool. But uh, you definitely deserve a mohawk, an A+, plus, a 100%, and I'll give you four stars. Matter of fact, let's give you five stars because uh, many students would um, not, you know, they would have been lost. And even though they probably uh, knew they were dealing with imaginary numbers, they would have struggled on how to figure this out. But if you got this right... 
well, you know, that shows that, you know, you're, you're, you're taking notes, you're paying, t paying attention to your teacher. Maybe you've been watching my other videos on YouTube, who knows, right? But um, that's a good job, okay? Now, again, this is a, not a problem that you're gonna encounter all the time, but this is the type of problem that you're gonna need to be able to solve. Uh, this is the difference between getting like a B and an A plus, right? Those students who get A pluses are gonna have to know how to do all the problems. So if you're, you know, striving for those top grades, well, then uh, this is a type of problem that you very well may encounter. Okay, so if you uh, enjoyed this video, if you found it fascinating, or if you even liked it in some way, please consider smashing that like button. And again, I hope you uh, become a subscriber to my channel. i um, been on YouTube for 10 plus years, have a, over a thousand videos. I'm posting new material all the time, basic to advanced math. My mission is to try to teach math in a clear and understandable way, okay? So if you like my teaching style, please take advantage of all my videos. They're organized in various playlists on my channel, but my best math help will be within my math help program. Okay, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.